In this lecture, we will look at the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. Just like the sample mean, if we take multiple samples from a population, we can observe a sample proportion. So for example, what if we were interested in the proportion of students who go to the movies on a weekend? So if we took uh, a sample of 100 students, maybe 40 of them go to movies on a weekend, so 40%. Or what if we say, what proportion of students, if we took a random sample, actually travel outside of the city on a weekend? So we could find something of interest to us, but we would express it as a proportion. So proportions basically um, is a way of measuring an attribute. So um, we could look at the proportion of students that have a red shirt. So red shirt is an attribute. The proportion of males in a classroom, uh, because every time I, you know, I, 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 I go to class and I'm teaching, I could look at the proportion of students that are male versus the proportion of students that are female. Um, or, you know, there's just so much stuff that we could do. The proportion of students that have an A in a course. Um, in the last exam that they did. So if I took a random sample of students, I say, what did you get in your last exam? What proportion of them actually have an A or higher in their last exam? So proportions are, um, are important to us because um, we have a number of cases where we're interested in the proportion uh, or the, an, an observation in a sample that's measured as a proportion, okay? Proportion of smokers, proportion of drinkers, proportion of... Uh, uh, people employed, proportion of people who voted. There's all kinds of examples of that. So as such, if there's a population, say let's say um, proportion of students who like football. I like soccer more than football for sure uh, because I come from a soccer loving country, although the real term is football. That's actually our term. Um, what is being played in North America, somebody could say, ah, this handball. I mean, Anyway, just teasing. Don't mean to create a fuss um, here. But, so when I say, um, so I'll say soccer, just to kind of differentiate from, from football, North American football. So I could say, okay, let's take a random sample of students and see who prefers, who likes um, soccer. So every time I took that sample, there's a population And every time that population has a proportion P, the proportion of people who like, or students who like football or soccer, I meant. See? Uh, let's say that is actually 70%. 0.7 or 70%. So if I took a random sample of N, let's say 100 students, and I asked them, so I'm going to denote my sample proportion as P bar. And so maybe in that sample I got 65%. If I took another sample, P bar might be 74%. N is 100. And if I keep repeating that, I will have P bar 1, P bar 2, P bar 3, P bar M. So much the same way. And so all of these together would give me a distribution. What's the distribution? What does that look like? So the random variable p bar, which is the value that we're observing, will have a distribution. So what's the nature of the distribution of p bar? Well, it turns out that p bar can be approximated as a normal distribution, normal, mu p bar, sigma p bar. So n meaning normal, and the mean is mu p bar, sigma p bar. But we have a condition that we must satisfy. It turns out that we need the following condition. n times p, right? n times p must be greater than or equal to 5, and n times 1 minus p must be greater than or equal to 5. So if the true population proportion is 0.7 and I'm sampling 100 individuals, 
70% of 100 is 70, that's greater than 5. And then 1 minus 70% is 30%, 30% of 100 individuals. That is also greater than 5. What that tells me then is I can approximate the sampling distribution as a normal distribution. Okay? So in that case, my uh, parameters would be mu p bar, sigma p bar. Now, what's the relationship between those and the population proportion p? It turns out that mu p bar, and I should prefer to write in black as well, but every now and then it's going to change the color, is the same as p. In other words, if I average all the sample proportions, I will get the same proportion as the population value. In other words, we, in your textbook, they refer to it as the expected value of P bar. The expected value of P bar is the population proportion. Expected is another way of saying the mean. And the standard deviation of P bar turns out to be P 1 minus P over n. That is the standard deviation of P bar. So if I have a sample proportion and I now want to calculate the Z score associated with it, then that Z score is given by sample P bar. How far is it from the population, which is mu P bar, and then divided by the standard deviation, sigma P bar. But if I express that in terms of the population values, it would look like P bar minus P, because we know mu P bar, sorry, over here, is P. And then the standard deviation of P bar is P bar, um, P, sorry, 1 minus P over N. So that would give us our Z bar. And then we could calculate probabilities using that distribution. So that's essentially the sampling distribution of the sample proportion, P bar. As long as we meet the conditions that n times p is greater than or equal to 5 and n times 1 minus p is also greater than or equal to 5, the sampling distribution can be approximated by a normal distribution. And we can then, um, as a result, we could then express the normal distribution as n mu p bar sigma p bar. But the relationship between the population and the sampling distribution is such that um, the mean of the pop of the sampling distribution would be the same as the population proportion and the standard deviation is the square root of p into 1 minus p divided by n. Everything is under that square root sign. All right? So good. Now let's look at a problem. I want you to look at problem number 37. 37 in your textbook. So 37, if you could, put, you could um, take a look at that, number 37, and I'm going to read it right here. So people end up tossing 12% of what they buy at the grocery store. Imagine that. In a day and age where we have um, hunger, uh, all around the world, we're tossing out food. We shouldn't be doing that. Assume that this is the true population proportion and that you plan to take a sample of 540 grocery shoppers to further investigate their behavior. Show the sampling distribution of PBA. So a couple things we need to note that what percentage of the population throws away food? 12%. So we have to kind of say, listen, there's something wrong with that when people are starving around the world. This is not a good thing. And then we take a sample size of 540. So if we wanted to test whether or not we could approximate the sampling distribution by a normal distribution, we would do n times p. So np would be 0.12 times 540. And um, we'll do that. Let's see here. 0.12 times 540 is equal to 64.8. Uh, 
And then if we take n, 1 minus p, that would be 540. 1 minus p would be 0.88. So 0.88 times 540 is 475.2. Clearly, that's greater than 5. This is greater than 5. And so therefore, we could say that p bar is normal with um, 0.12 and the standard deviation or standard error is the square root of 0.12 times 1 minus 0.12 we could put 0.88 over 540 and we could actually calculate what that is the square root of 0.12 times 0.88 divided by times 0.88 divided by 540 let me see if I get this right 0 0.01398 so that is n 0 0.12 0.01398 and that would be the standard deviation. I'm sorry, sampling distribution. What is the probability that your survey will produce a sample proportion between point uh, within 1.03 or 3% of the population proportion? So we say, what's the probability? What's the chance that when you take that sample, that you'll be within 3%? Now remember, this is 0.12. So within 3% means 3% that way and 3% this way. So 12 plus 0 0.03 makes it 0.15. 12 minus 0 0.03 makes it 0 0.09. Okay. So in essence, what we're being asked for is what's the probability that P bar is between 0 0.09 and 0.15? That's the question that you're being asked which is the same as P being between Z1. I'm going to let the, the Z1 represents 0 0.09, Z, and Z2. So if I put those into our Z form, let me try to get this over here. So in terms of our Z form, we would have P 0 0.09 minus 0 0.12 over 0 0.01398. No need to put the big square root on all that stuff because I've already calculated its value. Less than or equal to Z 0 0.15 minus 0 0.12 over 0 0.01398. Now what you notice, of course, is that that is the same 0 0.03. That's the same 0 0.03. Because we were asked, what's the probability of being within 0 0.03 of the population proportion? So we could have just taken the 0 0.03 and divided by 0 0.0198. 0 0.0398, sorry. It turns out that the z values that corresponds to this is um, 1.94. So that's the same as saying between negative 1.94, z, 1.94. And then we could actually look that up in the table. Find the area associated with 1.94 and subtract from it the area associated with negative 1.94. Let's squish that a little bit here. So that is equal to area associated with 1.94 minus the area associated with negative 1.94. When you look at the Z table, that turns out to be 
0.9838 minus 0 0.0162, 0 0.0162, which gives us 0 0.9676, 0 0.9676. So our answer is 96.76%. In other words, the question that is being asked here, what's the probability that if we took a random sample of 540 individuals, right, that we will have the average amount of uh, a proportion or the proportion of food that they will throw away is somewhere between 9% and 15%. And that's 96% of all shoppers will throw away between 90, uh, sorry, will throw away approximately uh, between 9% and 15% of their food, which is quite a bit. So on that note, um, we're going to end the class here and look forward to you in the next class. Thank you very much.